To put this case into context, we should review two important concepts, the southern culture of honor and the rarity of sororicide. Let's begin with the American South's culture of honor. Despite freedom of movement becoming much more attainable in modern times, the northern United States and southern United States remain culturally divided. This cultural divide has been the subject of much research. One outcome is the study of the South's so-called culture of honor. In essence, Southerners care much more than Northerners about their individual and family honor and are much more willing to defend that honor through violence. One classic study demonstrating this cultural difference employed an actor who would intentionally bump into the study's subjects as they crossed paths in a hallway. The actor would then exclaim, asshole, and continued walking. The subjects, who believed they were taking part of an entirely unrelated study, would have a number of psychological and physiological measurements taken immediately after the incident. The study found that Northerners were unaffected by the brief altercation, while Southerners had increased testosterone as well as cortisol levels, and were more likely to engage in aggressive actions. This cultural difference helps explain the rate of homicides in the southern United States, a rate that is considerably higher than that in the North, even after controlling for race and economic status. This might also help explain the phenomenon of Florida man. No, scratch that. Florida man cares not for his honor. In any case, let's turn to the second important concept in this case we will soon look at. Sororicide. Every year, nearly half of the more than 20,000 murder victims in the United States are related to or acquainted with their killers. Yet, sororicide is relatively rare, at a rate of roughly one per year. Sororicide is the act of killing one's sister, and is an uncommon term as evidenced by my need to explain it. In fact, even after typing in the equivalent terms for killing one's father, mother, and brother, Google autofill skips directly to infanticide, the act of killing one's offspring, further demonstrating the rareness of this act of killing one's sister. Even Wikipedia barely says anything about sororicide. The page for sororicide is just two sentences with a bunch of pop culture examples. In Banjo Tui, Gruntilda the witch kills her two sisters, Mingela and Blabella, when they lose the Tower of Tragedy quiz to Banjo and Kazooie. Okay, thanks Wikipedia. If you're any sort of true crime fan, you can probably immediately recall at least a handful of cases of children killing their parents, but will likely struggle to think of even one case of sororicide. Nevertheless, the reasons for killing one's sister are at least partially motivated by the same reasons children kill their parents. Consider this passage from one study on the subject. In many adult sibling homicides, perpetrators are dealing not only with unresolved childhood conflicts and the stress of living with a brother or sister, but also trying to cope with a variety of other problems in living. Indeed, in many cases, these other stressors, such as unemployment, divorce, substance abuse, and illness, have forced the perpetrator into a situation of being financially dependent on parents and or siblings who are eventually killed. Remember this passage, as it 100% applies to the case we're going to look at. But the current case has another possible motivator. Consider this. The most common form of sororicide is that of an honor killing, in which a brother kills his sister out of a fear that the sister's romantic relationships will dishonor the family. Honor killings are uncommon among Westerners, but many Western sororicides seem to be fueled by similar motives below the surface, especially in the South, with its culture of honor. This case, which took place in rural Texas, is no exception. Let's begin. This case brings us to the fallen town of Talco. Talco was once a booming oil town, attracting new residents hoping to strike it rich in the oil business. Unfortunately for Talco, the oil discovered wasn't of great quality. 
and the Talco oil business went bust. Now the town of Talco has had its best years behind it, and currently it's just a small town with a mere 500 residents. Over a third of its residents are below the poverty line. Our current case takes place at 9 p.m. on September 18, 2013, a hot September night in Talco, Texas. The police receive a phone call from a distraught husband. Upon returning home from buying food, he finds his wife lifeless, dead in his home. His wife's car is missing, as is his wife's brother, who is living with the couple. Police dispatch detectives to the home, where they find the wife indeed dead, through stab wounds. Subsequently, a missing vehicle alert is put out to the surrounding counties to look for the brother, who is now the prime suspect. The brother, in the meantime, is driving south, stopping at a gas station to throw the murder weapon into a dumpster. Ultimately, the police spot the car at a different gas station and take the brother, Stephen Nugent, into custody. Sheriff's Office. And your full name? Stephen Lee Nugent. Stephen Lee Nugent? Yes, sir. When were you born, Mr. Nugent? 123162. 123162. Thanks, sir. <laughs> How do you spell your last name, Mr. Nugent? N-E-U-G-E-N-T. And your first name? Stephen Lee. All right, Ms. Nugent, before we get started today, I'm going to advise you of your rights, okay? Yes, sir. You do have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to talk to a lawyer and have him present while, with you while you're being questioned. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, one will be appointed to represent you before any questioning if you wish. You can decide at any time to exercise these rights and not answer any questions or make any statements. You understand those rights? Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. Nugent, I'd like to start off. Uh, I know our officers responded up to uh, Talco earlier. Yes, sir. Uh, first off, uh, are you living? Wait a minute. Are you living in Talco? Hold on. If you've read me my rights, uh -huh. what am I charged with? You're not charged with anything. Right? You're not charged with anything right at the moment. Okay. We're, we're fixing to discuss that. Okay. Well, what I'd like is a, a timeline of what, what's occurring. To right, I understand so, that. Yeah. Cause so, have you been living in Talco, or I've been. I, what I did was uh, live in Oak Cliff, okay, and to get away from the crack cocaine, I moved out here. Okay. And uh, my sister helped me move out here, get away from there, and then my brother-in-law sold that house that I was living in. And so I've been doing fine out here. No dirty <laughs> UAs. You know, I might do it a little bit. You know, been working. First time I've worked since I've been out of prison. Okay. 
But there's been a lot of tension in the house because my brother-in-law doesn't want me in the house. Okay. Okay. He's been using my sister. So you have been living there, is what you're oh, saying? Oh yeah, I've lived there for since about March, two years ago. March two years ago. Yes. Sir. Do you know yeah, the address? My grandfather built that house. I grew up there as a little kid. Okay. While Nijin's actions are inexcusable, you might feel at least a bit of sympathy for his situation. Recently out of prison, Nugent is on parole and attempting to kick his drug habit. His sister has taken him back into their old family home, but Nugent is forced to live with someone he despises, his brother-in-law. Based on Nugent's descriptions, his brother-in-law is a bit of a bum, always broke and always asking Nugent for financial help. Nugent mentions several times in his interrogation that the house that he's living in, that his sister owns, was built by his grandfather. The house seems to be a source of pride or honor for Nugent, and the fact that his brother-in-law is free-riding via his sister certainly has led to a lot of anger in Nugent. We see hints that this is a sort of pseudo-honor killing almost immediately. Nugent begins the interrogation trying to paint his brother-in-law as exploiting his sister and painting his sister as misguided. He has also set up the house to be a symbol of his family's legacy, which is being besmirched by both his sister and his brother-in-law. But back to the sympathy angle for a second, just look how small this house is. I've lived with insufferable people before, and we've always had enough space to where interactions were minimal. Being stuck in a small space with someone you hate is sure to give way to much more animosity and stress than is do you know the address to that location? It's That's in Talco, correct? Yes, sir. 7547. And what's your sister's name? Uh, Teresa Elaine Collins. Yeah, she's done so much for me. Okay. Let's start off uh, when the deputies first arrived up there this yeah. evening. About what time was that? Man, I'm not sure. Probably about five, six, somewhere in there. Uh, I let my brother-in-law talk me into taking him up there and get him ten dollars so that he can go do some sheetrock from a boys in the morning. Okay. Okay. And I'd already given him damn near sixty dollars. I'm like, where's the money at? You know, I didn't want to do it. And he wanted me to go to town with him. You know, you got thirty dollars left, come on, to go to town with me. No, I don't want to go, I want to go to sleep. Okay. I'm trying to go to sleep for the past two or three hours. And so he says, Come on up here and, and at least put ten dollars in my gas tank, I'll pay you back tomorrow. So he owes me fifty five dollars right now. Okay. Money that he's that he's mooched off from me. And so I take him up there, I get me a barbecue sandwich and a uh, pack of cigarettes and uh, get him $10 of gas. And then on the way home, I'm like, Burp. I've been drinking, I've been drinking some brandy, you know, so it's it's coming up. And he's like, you can't say excuse me? You sure are disrespectful? I said, well, sorry. He got in this whole argument about this, just that, and that, you know, uh, you know, because the last couple of days I don't have any way. You see, how, you see the car the way it is? Mm -hmm. I can't get more than maybe 40 miles and it's going to overheat. <clears throat> and I don't want to ruin that car. Well, let, let's get back to the subject. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, no. it, it all boils down to the car, yeah. okay? Because that car, he's blaming me for destroying that car, okay? But I can make it back and forth to work. So we're but right now, I don't want to. I don't want to hurt the car because that's my sister's car. I'm trying to protect it. So we all having this argument up there. At the yeah, house? yeah. But when we got back to the house. We got out of the truck and we were arguing, mm -hmm. and he came up and he, he choked me. Okay. He said, I'll make you where you can't stop breathing. And he punched me in the, he punched me in the throat. Okay. Right here, I'm still got pain. 
and uh, knocked me over. I just told him, I said, look, just leave me alone. I don't want to fight him. It's my brother-in-law. But he's got some kind of crazy thing going on. Where he, I mean, he's assaulted my sister before. And uh, I just told him, just leave me alone. No, I just want to go upstairs and go to sleep. And uh, so I go upstairs. And my sister comes up there. She says, what, what are you doing? What are you? Daniel said, you call, you call the police? Yeah, I call the police. So she Anytime I get assaulted, I want to call the police. That's my right. Mm -hmm. And she got real at, aggravated at me. Daniel was saying something. I don't know what, what she was talking about. He was saying, but uh, anytime I get assaulted, I'm not going to attack anybody. Okay. But I told her, I said, look, I did not call, I called the police because my parole officer had said that anytime I get assaulted, don't fight back, just call the police and document it. Okay. And so that's what I did. And I went upstairs and uh, Teresa was like, well, you got to get out of the house, you got to go. You, you need to, and I asked her, I said, well, whose house is this? It's not your house. It's my, it's my Center of my uncle's house. My grandfather built that house out of a out of a lumber yard back in 1928. Again, Nugent mentions the house's origin. It's clearly a sense of pride to the man, as he knows the exact date, 1928, and its origin story. He also refuses to recognize his sister's ownership of the house. This whole situation could have been avoided had Nugent just moved out. But doing so would be damaging to his pride and his sense of honor, as he'd be essentially abandoning his grandfather's legacy to his sister and her deadbeat husband. He knew that tensions were rising in the house, but he felt the need to stand his ground, an action that would have been less likely had Nugent not been born a southerner. Hey. But, uh... Yeah, I went back upstairs and I started packing my stuff up. I was going to put it in the Cadillac and go up to Walmart and get some of my money back. Because, I mean, Daniel had already borrowed, you know, $150 from me. Well, I got sheetrock tomorrow. Well, guess what? Today it was tomorrow and he didn't have no sheetrock. Tomorrow will be another, well, I didn't have no sheetrock today. Why am I giving you all this money? Obviously, you're, you're hustling me. So did you and your sister get in any fight while you were up there? No, I will never fight my sister. I love her to death. Did you get in a fight, physical altercation with anybody other than Daniel? No? Well, yeah, Daniel uh, attacked me behind the truck, and I called the police. Okay. That's and what you described to me earlier, Chris? Yes, sir. Okay. Then uh, did Daniel leave at any point? Um, I think prior, he prior, left. Prior to you leaving? He left. He yeah. was there for a while. He says, I'm going to go up there and talk to you. I said, don't just leave me alone. I'm trying to go sleep. He, did he leave in the truck or what did he leave in? He left in the truck. He left in the truck. The red one out there? Yes, sir. Okay. About what time was that? I got no idea about the time or no any idea. of this because I'm like, but I, it, I'm like, I want to go to sleep, but, but it was I've after, got all this stress on me. It was after, you the, know police, what I mean? it was after the police showed up, though, correct? Oh, yeah. That's when he left. He left. He was already drunk, and I'm like, come on, you're drinking. You don't need to be driving. Okay. You know. And then, did he get back before you left? No, I, I just went in there, and I packed my stuff up, and I told Teresa I was going up to Walmart. And then he called me on the phone and said, hey, don't you leave. I said, man, come on, I got to go. I got to go to Walmart. Because I need to get some money. Because if I need a bus ticket to get back to Dallas, mm -hmm. I'm trying to get out of there. I'm tired of, of all this. How'd you get the blood on you? Where? On your brow? Probably from uh, Daniel. Probably from Daniel. How's that? Well, I mean, he was choking me. And, yeah, but I don't see when he, where'd you bleed from? Uh, who knows? Huh? I don't know. I got blood on my brow. You know where this is going, don't you? No. Yeah, you do. Tell me the rest of the story about what ha happened up at the house tonight. Well, I got Seriously, my stuff together. 
Let's go ahead and get to the point. Yeah, I'm just going out the house. All right. Mm -hmm. Put my stuff in the truck and I called Dan. I said, when are you going to be here? I'm going to Walmart. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And I got the truck. I got the car and left. What happened prior to that, though? Nothing. I told well, my sister I was leaving. Why ain't going to be able to help you right now? You got blood on your brow. You got them on your glasses. That's when we took it. Yeah. Well, you know that. So I got in a fight with Daniel. You got in a fight with somebody else, too. Let's go ahead and be honest in this. There ain't no reason to lie about it at this point. I've been doing this job for a long time. I know you've been doing this job for a long time. So, let's go ahead and be honest and let's get this out. What are you going to do for me? What do you mean, do for you? Just jack me up and fucking lock my ass away forever? Why do you say that? I'm asking you. Well, why did you make that comment? You asked me a question, and I gave you a... Why would a, you... Why would you... Because I was attacked. I was attacked. By who? By my sister. By your sister? Yeah. Okay, let's... Tell me the story, then. What happened? She attacked me with a mop handle. Okay. And what occurred? She attacked me. And what happened? Go through the attack and tell me everything that occurred. She attacked me, I defended myself. How did you defend yourself? You want this on the record or not? Yes. You might as well put it on there, we know what happened. I know you know what happened. But I know one thing, my brother-in-law started all this shit. I understand that. I'm not denying that a bit, I'm not denying what happened between you and him. But what okay. I'm talking about is He attack. wired her up. He wired her up and got her aggravated at you. Aggravated at me. So what she did was she came to me with a fucking mop out. Did she? Is that how you got the scratches on your arm too? Yeah. Is that where she scratched you? She started attacking me. I mean, I don't want to attack anybody. Little, little but little. I'm not going to get beat up with an old dirty ass mop out. I understand that. Let's go through tell me everything that occurred then. I want to know everything. Well, you want to know everything? I wish it was Daniel. You wish it was Daniel? Yeah. I understand. He'd come in there. I'd suck his ass out. To beat you with it. Because he's a common artist. He's been fucking my sister off for years. I understand. Put him in a jail cell with me. Come out there alive. You won't be able to come out there alive? He won't. Tell me, let's go through the story of what happened between you and your sister, if you don't mind, sir. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Okay. That's what I mean. I don't care how much time I get. If you lock me up forever, I wouldn't give a fuck. Okay. I had any pills in that bottle. You, they lucky they just got me where they did, because I was about to take them off. That's not her house. She thinks it is. That's our family's house. So what happened during the altercation? Daniel is a manipulator. Mm -hmm. She has mental problems. And he gets in there and pisses her off and lies to her. And she got aggravated at you. So, okay. tell me the rest of the story. What you happened then? Tissue. You got the tissue. Hey Terry, can we get some tissues for him? Tell me the rest of the story. Mr. Nugent. To. You're not pleading to nothing. I want to know exactly what occurred. She attacked me. I understand that. What's your mop handle? Then what happened? I attacked back. I defended myself. How did you attack back? Ruthlessly. Ruthlessly. What did you use? What do you think? Uh, I know, but I want to. I want to hear. You know you. what I'm. You know what I use. Where, Where is it? it? Hmm? I don't know. 
One of my investigators might, but I don't. They don't know where it's at. Can you tell me where it's at? I'm not going to tell you unless you give me a deal. There's no deal. I can't give you a deal. No, you're not going to give me a deal. You know, I, don't, I, don't, I don't believe you should. Hmm? Okay. okay. I'm guilty of this. You're guilty of it? Yeah. Can you tell me what you used? I'm not going to tell you. You know what tell me? Why implicate myself any further? Why not? We already know. The detective is actually not bluffing here. Police have already found the murder weapon, a knife, in a gas station dumpster. A detective cannot give privileged information, information only the police and the perpetrator would have, to a suspect, lest they taint the case for the prosecutor. At this point, police have enough evidence for a quick and easy case, should it go to trial, and are looking for a confession. Also, take a look at Nugent's eyes. They're drier than a KFC biscuit. This guy's holding that tissue in front of his face like it's a fucking newspaper. This guy can't act worse shit. Why even try to feign remorse at that point? It's like he knows what he should say to be socially acceptable, but his words and his actions are completely out of sync. Honestly, if I were him, I'd go the whole emotionless psychopath angle because that's way more believable for this guy. The dude can't even shed a single tear for his dead sister. Even if you had a really shitty relationship with your sister, if you wanted to fake some th sympathy and, and remorse, you should at least be able to think of a couple good times that you had with her and kind of like just reminisce on that and think how you'll never be able to do that again with her. In this manner, you might be able to even squeeze out a tear. I have always been honest. And I ain't saying you have. I, I don't with know. I've never met with you before. With police officers. I understand. Every time I went down on any of my sentences, I've been honest. I appreciate your honesty today. I think this is the first occasion me and you've ever talked, if I'm not mistaken. Do um, you know my brother-in-law? Uh, I've had occasion to meet him. Man. Yes, sir. I've been here for since 1999. Yeah. So, well, do you have any one to put your foot up his ass at any time? Yeah, he can be fine. I'm not doubting that one bit. I know exactly who you're talking about there. Yeah. But your sister's the one that's dead right now, correct? That's that's who I'm talking about right now. I was gonna wait for him to come. So you want to tell me the rest of the story? He wired her up on me. Okay. She came in and we got in an argument. She started hitting me with that damn mop hand. Okay. You know there's a mop hand in there. My investigators are going to process the scene, so. Okay. I, I'm not. I there's a mop hand. All right. Okay. The damn nasty ass mop hand. They mop up dog shit and dog piss with it all day. She's attacking me with it. Okay. Okay. I'm waiting on Daniel to get home. Because I'm tired of his bullshit. I'm tired of him assaulting me, grabbing me, punching me. That knife wasn't for her. That was for him. Just be clear about that. I understand. Just be clear about that. I don't give a damn about anything else. You should be clear about that. I absolutely will. I love her to death. But. It ain't going to hurt nothing there. I love her to death. <clears throat> you want to tell me where you put the knife? No. You're not going to tell me? Why? Why? Further implicate myself. Can't get no further than what it already is. How's that going to be any further? I don't know. They kept pushing me and pushing me and pushing me. I would like to get the knife off where if it's in a place where a kid or anybody else could get it. No, it's no place like that. I'll tell you what. What's that? You give me a single cell in that jail where I can wait for my court trial. Can you do that? I cannot promise any anything. Well, see, at all. I, can't I can't promise you anything. 
Well, I understand. And that's one thing I cannot do in here. I cannot make bargains or anything such as that. Well, you know, we, we, somebody who can. Well, you can do these things. No, sir. Most likely, I can tell you, you will be put in a medical cell under your condition. Well, I mean, I've got which, COPD, I can't hardly which, breathe. Which medical condition is going to be a single cell, but I cannot promise you that, and I'm not going to make promises here. Here, Here's the situation, Mr. Nugent. We, we both know what already occurred. Everybody does. No doubt. Well, I would like to see his ass, Daniel Collins, go down as a fucking accessory to this, because he wired her up to start with. Assaulted me, wired her up. I'm going to be talking to Mr. Collins. Then went to go buy dope with money that I... Here. I need to go... I need to... That's what he told me. I need to go pick up some sheet rock in Paris in the morning. Can you give me $10? Sure, I took her up there, run my car, gave $10. But the whole time back, I felt like... You know, fuck... That's what he told me straight. Fuck you, Steve. Yeah, I don't doubt that. Like I said, I know He's Mr. sorry. He uh, needs to do some time to rehab or something. I know Mr. Collins, and I don't doubt anything you're saying about him. Sorry. So, like I said, you know, it is what it is. We we both know what occurred. I would like to get the knife that was used. So. Well, he's probably got it. Why do you say he's got it? Yeah, he's probably trying to stick it in me. Uh, Shit. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. The knife. Yes, sir. What is that going to do for you? It just sums up everything. It shows me where it's at and everything else. Yeah, but. And, and it matches what does it. It convicts me. Well, it's, it's, you've already told how me. How much time am I going to get? You've already told me you stabbed her. Does it matter which knife you use? Okay, how much time am I going to get? I've got a camera right there. Yeah, it's been recording. I know it has. I know. I got no yeah. problem with that. I understand. And I, I understand that you've been honest with me this whole time, and I'd like you to continue. But that's up to you, you know. There's nothing I can do to make you. I would tell you that okay. I, I really would like to know where the knife's at. I want to tell you where this knife is at. Yes, sir. But I want to make a statement yeah. first. Absolutely. A written statement Absolutely. that you will release to the press. I can't say I'll release anything to the press in a well, case. Well, you need to release it to the press. Here, here's the situation. It's going to be an honest statement. Have I not been honest with you? Hey, hey, you can be honest with them if they want to meet with you and talk to you. Hey, feel free to talk to them. I don't mind. And you can make a statement right here that's being recorded. Whatever statement you'd like to make, I, I do not mind one more Well, maybe I need to talk to the district attorney. That's fine, too. But you got probably maybe... It's up to you if you want to tell me where the knife is Tomorrow at. or today, or you won't be able to get the knife back. Okay. okay. That'd be up to you. Do you want to be honest with me anymore and tell me anything else? I would like to make a statement. What statement are you wanting to make? Write it down. I'm ready to make it. You ready to make it? Yeah. Give me just a moment. Steven, I would ask you how you doing, but that'd be kind of a dumb question, wouldn't it? <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm Sheriff Ingram. Sheriff? You're the sheriff? Yes, I am the sheriff. How are you tonight? Not very Not good. Not very good, okay. <laughs> well, I understand some things that happened. I've been listening to you. And, uh, watching on camera. Yeah, yeah, I'm watching it. And and we we knew what happened before you. I know. Us. You, you know that. I'm not trying to run you all around, Luke. It's just... I know. Man, and you know, Stephen, here's the thing, buddy. Things happen in life sometimes. But, you know, the thing is, is, is there's always a second chance for most. And and I think in life, just like you said, you, you know what you've done. You're going to go to jail. But you know what? You've got, a, you've got a second chance to make this better because you've still got the right to turn your life around. I turned it around. Well, I ain't doing good. Thing is, I got a 
and fucked up with some goddamn crackheads. Yeah, and I, and you don't want that. You know, you I know can't stop doing it if I stay around. I know, people. I know, boy, it's hard, isn't it? But you know, here's the thing. You know, that's why we fight that crap so, so bad. You know, God, what? I hate crap because I, I do too. I hate this. I love stuff. it too. That's sad. Thing well, I, I've never had it, so I don't love it. But I can tell you, I hate it. I hate what it does to people. I hate what it does to people like you because you know it's what? Got my brother-in-law all fucked up. Yeah. Man. I called in earlier. I wanted y'all to pick him up for drunk driving. All right. Hell, he was going to get some crack. And nobody caught him. He came back to the house. An officer was there. I told him, I said, I wanted to be anonymous. Mm -hmm. He's out driving drunk. Hell, he had this much of fucking brandy. I gave him. But... You been drink, have you been drinking a little bit from that? Oh, I've been drinking. Yeah. But I've been at home. Right, right. I'm That's trying right. to go to sleep. Just sleep me alone if I'm upstairs by myself. Right, and I understand, I understand that. You know, hey, man, sleep I leave me alone. But since I got money, they're coming up there. Bye, 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 bye. You were your Burger King, wouldn't you? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. I've, yeah. Worked. Yeah. Worked there now. Uh, he hit me right here. Did he hit you? And he choked me. Okay. Did, him. did you protect yourself when he did that? I knocked his hands away. Did you? Just choked him. Okay. I told him, I said, just leave me alone. All right. And this was after I put $10 of gas in his truck. He was wanting to go get some crack, but he was a thing. He knew I had money on my car. And he was intimidating me, trying to make me give him more money so he could go buy some more crack. Look at that shit. I'm tired of it. Yeah. I came here from Oak Cliff to get away from all that. I know how these and people you, do. You come back down here and get right in the middle of your family. Oh, God. It's, I know it's been a nightmare. But, but look. It's been a nightmare. Hey, Stephen, here's the, here's the thing. Uh, we, we've got an opportunity right now for the, for the nightmare's over. Sorry. That's okay. It's all right. But you know, the nightmare the, the nightmare right now can be over, and, and every bit of this can be over tonight, and you don't have to look back on your shoulder anymore. You can you can get this thing done and make it make a new start. Oh, I would love to. I know you I can. Hate that. My sister, I love her so much. Hey, you know what? Sometimes we do things to people we love. We do. She was attacking me with pop. And you uh, protected yourself. Is that what yeah. you said earlier? Well, I the only reason why I had the knife was when Daniel came back. I was going to chop his fucking head off. Was it to save her from me? Is fucking. Futility. Everybody knows he beats up on my sister. Does he? Okay. Now I've lived there for two years and let, let that stuff go on. Yeah. I've had enough. So what happened? So what happened tonight? Did she just push you or what happened? Did she? What happened tonight? Why you stabbed her? Jeez. They were kicking me out of the house. And oh, were they really? And, uh, did you have a place to go? Did you not? Did I you? got nowhere to go. You had nowhere to go. And uh, she'd been hitting me with that mop, nasty ass mop, and blaming me for calling the cops. Said I lied to her that I did not. That I lied. Right. She told her that I did call. I said, Yeah, I called the cops. Part of my parole stipulations. Right. That if I get assaulted, call the police. Don't attack back. Well, hey, you did the right thing when you called us. You know it. I know I did. I you tried did. to do the right thing. That's right. I agree. You did. You did. You did the right thing, Stephen. I didn't do the right thing today. Well, but you know what? Uh, what you did, though, God will forgive you what you did tonight. No, he won't. Yes, he will. Not for my sister. Yes, he will. Oh, so much. Yes, he will. <sighs> but you know what you're gonna have to do? <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna. One thing you have to forgive yourself. I think she was using me. You think she was? Yeah. But then again, everybody uses everybody. Did you uh, did you know that she's hurt pretty bad when you left? Is she alive? No, she's not alive. Well, she's been wanting to go to God, so. What, what else has she been? been like she has been suffering and suffering and suffering. <laughs> An honor killing is often considered a form of altruistic punishment. 
An altruistic punishment is the act of punishing one person to benefit the group. In most honor killings, the death of, say, a promiscuous female family member in a Muslim culture is considered an altruistic act as it restores honor to the family. Nugent is attempting to make his act of murder be as altruistic as possible. He mentions his sister's suffering and, quote-unquote, wanting to go to God immediately before confessing to stabbing her, pushing a sort of mercy-killing narrative, despite there being no evidence for such a thing. Grasping at any rationalization he can, Nugent really exerts himself to make his killing seem to be anything but bad. And according to his demeanor as well as his lack of contrition, he likely truly believes that he did nothing wrong. But what, what, hey, but what she attacked me. I, I wanted, I just, just snapped. You just snapped? Well, well, tell me this, what else happened other than that? Did anything else happen in the house? Well, Daniel was threatening me. Who? Daniel. Who's Daniel? Daniel College. Oh, that's her husband? Yeah. So he was there when you stabbed her? No. He was gone. Oh. I came downstairs looking for him. I oh. I was going to make me something to eat. Uh-huh. I was going to make me something to eat so I could sober up a little bit, give me some water. Right. You know, go back upstairs. And I had already had my stuff packed. And I told Teresa, I says, I'm, I'm going to go to Walmart and sell what I got. Then she would have left. She was telling me, you need to find somewhere else's place to stay. What was you going to say at Walmart? I, with stuff I bought, drill, my, my flat screen, stuff I bought on my Bluebird. Oh, okay. Was you, were you going to get your money back? Did you buy it I was there? trying to get my money back so I could get a bus ticket, go back to Dallas or whatever. Oh, get Dallas. away from me here. But, but after, okay, but I'm, we understand that you stabbed her, but then what else happened there? Did you, did anything else happen with, with anybody else while you uh, were there? No, it wasn't nobody else. Okay. Animals. Huh? What about, what about any animals? Uh, Nothing? No. Why? Okay. No, I wouldn't hurt any of them animals, all of them animals. Do you? Okay. Um, so then, what did you do after, what did you do after you, after you had your altercation with your sister? I just packed my stuff up, I was going to try to get as far away as possible. I was called Daniel and said, meet me at Walmart. I want to get a hold of his ass. So you still have a knife with you at Walmart? Yeah. You just going to stab him with it? Because I was going to cut his fucking head off. Was you? He is the problem. He is the problem. He won't go get treatment. He won't curb his drug addiction. Okay? Mm hmm He's always bringing crack back to the house. Right. And, and getting my sister to smoke it. Mm. Okay? And I, and I know you. And I told Teresa several times, don't let him bring that stuff back. If I smoke it, I won't have shit. I already know. So you ain't been smoking that crap tonight. You've been drinking, right? I've been drinking. You've been drinking? What you been drinking? Brandy. Brandy? You like brandy? Well, it's, it doesn't really get me all that drunk. But when I do drink a little bit, I do Okay. Yeah. You know, so the next you left the bottle. Bar, the bottle, he, the so bottle I got upstairs, I didn't drink all that. So what's the bottle? Yeah, who's so been drinking it? Hey, so what did you do? What happened at Walmart? Did you not get your money back on anything? Or? No, everything. Well, I don't have the receipt for the, uh, for the flat screen. Okay, so they I do you. not want Daniel having that because I'm leaving. No, that ain't his. That ain't his. I don't want any of my stuff in his hands. If I get the treatment, if I go in. Hey, we got your stuff. He ain't got your stuff. We've got it. It's your stuff. That's not his that stuff. That dude is a, is a fucking thief. Yeah. Well, and a crackhead. And he's, he's taking my tool belt mm -hmm. that I bought right. to the pawn shop. Uh -huh. You know. Did he sell you crap? He sold my shit. Well, I'll be. Oh. Uh, hey, okay, so you left Walmart. Then what happened? Where'd you go? I just got gas and I am trying to get out of town. To make, to Where'd you get gas at? I don't know, some gas station over there. Where, where at? Walmart. And then I pulled into that other gas station. Walmart? Well, closed. Did you just use a card or yeah, something? Yeah, I got a Walmart card. Okay. Uh, yeah, they gave me that. So they were drill. drill. For the drill, they gave me the money back on the Walmart card, so I got gas. Tonight you did? They gave it to you tonight? You was in Walmart yeah. tonight? Yeah. 
Oh, okay. So they didn't get the money back on the drill then. You get the money back on my drill and my, and my wireless keyboard and mouse. Shit I bought two, three weeks ago. Okay, your drill, your wireless keyboard, mouse, and that's it? Yeah. You didn't have the receipt for I the, didn't have the receipt for the, uh, the TV. It's upstairs in my room. So they give it back to you on carts. You used to use a card out there at the pump. Yeah. Okay. Then where'd you go? Figured I'd go get some more, uh, whatever that town is. I don't know this area very well. I just went south. You just went south? Yeah. Then what happened? Uh, well, then that car overheated. Oh, your car? Okay. Oh, Cadillac, my sister Cadillac. Hmm. So, the, so, so, yeah, I've been trouble. So, is that what happened? What'd you, what you do when it overheated? What'd you do when it overheated? You pull over. It's got a computer on it. Okay, then, oh, okay. Uh, then what happened then? I pulled in to put some more water in it. Oh, did you? Well, where'd you get water at? I had it in the car. Oh. I mean, y'all got to get over of that. <laughs> oh, is that what that was? Just um, for the radio. Oh, sure. I got you. But, uh, I don't know. They keep blaming me for going out. She's the one who hit the car that got the leak started to start with. <laughs> you know. But, I mean, what's those Are you kidding, man? plastic metal radiators start to go hey, they, make it, they make it crap cheaper, cheaper, don't they? Well, they charge you more, and they make it cheaper. That's exactly what they're doing. I went online so you, and found one for a dollar and fifty seven dollars at auto. The radio? For that car. Well that's not too bad. No shit. For a Cadillac? Dang, that's not bad at all. Hey, so you stopped up there, is that where the is is what that's where they call it. That's where they call it, yeah. Okay, so the you had the knife with you. Place so the you cheapest you, gas place in the world. Oh really? Yeah. Did you still have the knife with you when they caught you? Huh? Did you still have your knife with you when they caught you? That you gonna stab your brother in law with? So where, where'd you put it? I'm not telling you where I put it. Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you. You ain't got to tell me because I found your knife. Did you? Yes. Right. Yes. I found your knife. It's a black handed knife. And it's going to have your sister's blood on it. And it's going to have your fingerprints on it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We've, we've already got it. Stephen, okay. just like everything. We've got it. Where? I'm not going to tell you where I found it. Uh-huh. But I promise you, I'll show it to you in a minute. I don't I matter. found it. I don't, don't matter. I mean, I, I found your knife. We, we had your knife all along. We're just going to see how honest you would be. Well, I, that's just like one thing maybe that I can hold out for, for maybe. Well, no, here's, here's, I'm here's, going to jail, how are you doing? Well, Stephen, here's the thing, man. Uh, the, the, just because you tell us the truth don't make the charge go up no. because you tell the truth. No, no. It don't. I mean, so, you, you, the, the, the charge is you've killed your sister. And that is the charge, so it don't go any higher than that. I mean, uh-huh. so being honest with us just actually makes you look better. And and that's, 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 that's all we're trying to do. being honest with you. Well, okay. you almost, I'm sorry. except for the knife. Well, I didn't want to give that a word. Well, that's about the only thing I got. But you should have known we going to find it. I know y'all are going to find it. You I tracked mean, it by credit card. Huh? You tracked it by credit card. <laughs> well, well, I'm going to save some stuff because you're saving it. But I tell you what, you start being more honest with me, and I'll just I'll let you in on some little secrets on how we work. Because you you know we got the knife. I described the knife to you. We got the blood on it. It's got your fingerprints on it. Yeah. I've got your knife. Well, that knife was not meant for her. I know that. I know that. Right. So now I want you to be honest with me and, and, and this camera so the DI see this, because it's real important that you just be very honest. And you have been up to the point about the knife because you're saying we won't find it. Stephen, you know where you put it. We don't find I know. It. Y'all don't find it, man. So now you, you tell me why that knife wasn't found and how you put it where you put it. Because that's my question, because that's what's aggravating me. That knife should have been found. Well, here's the thing. All I did was put it there. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to get it back. How? How did you want to get it back? I just walked back up and get it. Did you not think we was going to keep you? We was going to come get you? Well, I don't know how long would it took y'all to catch me. Mm. But so so tell me this: what happened when they got you? You tell go from let's go from there. You tell me what happened when these police officers pulled up and got you. Uh, they pulled up. I already knew what was up. Okay. And, uh, they asked for money, and I said, "My name's Stephen Pigeon." 
I was actually helping another guy trying to get his car started. <laughs> This is one of my favorite parts. Nugent claims to have been helping someone who was having car troubles at the gas station where he was eventually arrested. This is almost certainly just another story to make himself look altruistic, and based on what the witness says, it seems to have actually occurred just in his head. Like he played out the whole scenario and wants to convince himself that it really happened. So according to the witnesses at the scene, there was a man at the gas station who was having car troubles, and he was being helped by a woman, not Nugent. The woman who was working on the car did notice Nugent staring at them while she was helping the man with his car. In her own words, quote unquote, This weird guy just rolls up, and he was sitting at this pump right here. He was staring at us. I had no clue who he was. I thought he did not look right, there was something wrong, and he was just not a person I wanted to be around. I don't know why this part of the interrogation tickled me so much, but perhaps because I've spent so much time studying narcissists, and narcissists are prolific story stealers. They like to take, I'm sure if you have a narcissist friend, you've probably heard a story that you've told your narcissist friend be repeated back to you by the narcissist as if it had happened to him or her. So I just like this where Nugent is just standing at the park uh, at the gas station staring at this woman who's fixing the other guy's car and the woman feels like kind of creeped out but in Nugent's head he's the person who's fixing the car and that all happened because of him and he's going to tell the police officer yeah I was just at a gas station fixing some guy's car when you guys picked me up and arrested me I'm a good old boy I haven't done anything wrong I'm just a Really altruistic guy, making society better. The man is in his own little fantasy world. Yeah, uh, putting a star. I used to release in my life to, but they obviously came up and identified the uh, Cadillac. And, uh, I mean, I don't know y'all can catch me on that run. Right. Well, go ahead and tell me what happened then. They ain't got them. Strip, you know, search me. They searched you? Yeah. I'm having a little trouble to believe they searched you good. Why? Well, you know why. Why? Because of my medication? No. Why? Well, I'm just, okay, maybe your medication is part of it. Yeah. Plus, I had a screwdriver. Mm -hmm. You know what the screwdriver is for? Mm hmm. What's the screwdriver for? Help him fix that car? Well, no. Because you wouldn't even use it on your brother in law because you had your knife for your brother in law. No, uh, I was gone. But, I mean, if I needed another license plate, I'd probably get it with a screwdriver. Mm hmm. Oh, no license plate. She could run. So, so, so. I, was, I knew I wasn't going to get very far. It was just, just a matter of time before y'all can catch up with me. Right. You know, I've been in and out of prison for years. You know. Okay. Well, we're still, I still got to be an idiot. I'm going to try to be an idiot. Right. So, so, but I'm still, still, I'm still, I'm still, <laughs> yeah. well, I'm yeah. still curious how you got the knife where you got it without, without getting caught red handed with it. So, how'd you do that? I dumped it. Well, I know you dumped it. it, but I was going to get it back, but I forgot about it. Where'd you, where did you dump it? You said you dumped Well, I don't see how honest you don't be. And what is that going to do for me? What is that going to do for me? Probably <laughs> just make you look more honest. Self-defense. Well, that's uh, that's something we're definitely going to look at. I mean, under the circumstances. I mean, I really have. here's the thing, Steve. We've got to listen to you. Whatever you tell us, we've got to listen to you, and we've got to take that into consideration. Okay. Okay? And and so far, I think that you have been pretty honest. Uh, but the only thing is, when it comes to the knife, that, that when, you, when you're not credible about that, then how can we think that you're credible about the other? It's, it's, see, that's my whole point. I didn't want to tell you that. Well, here's I, I didn't want to tell you that because I wanted okay. you to do that on your own. Listen to me very carefully. Mm -hmm. That knife was not meant for myself. I know that. 
But here's the thing, Stephen. You're saying it's self-defense, and this is the whole purpose. Do you not see what I'm doing? You're, if I can't find you credible, I understand. The whole story, how I'm going to tell you. Credible? I'm going to tell you. Okay. You obviously ain't found nothing yet. No, no, I'm not lying to you. We really have it. I'm not lying. Okay, well, it doesn't really matter because that night was not meant for my sister. I know that. Okay, I was tired of my brother-in-law. I didn't okay. manage to be. Right. And I, and I yeah, want to believe that. In that door, I was going to chop his ass right. up. Right. Beat him the dog. And I want to believe that. But well, I want you to be completely honest with me. Okay, you, well, you know where Walmart's at. Yep. Okay, if you're going this way, there's a gas station. Mm-hmm. Right? Right. Right there on the left, by the light. Yeah, yeah. That's where you found the bullet. Okay. But tell me, what did you, how did you get rid of it? Then you haven't found it. You know where it's at. You tell, you give me the rest of the story. No, I can't give you nothing because then if I did, it wouldn't make you credible for the other stories. I can't do that. You don't understand okay. that's, that's understand. my whole that's my whole point. I've tried to I've tried oh, to explain I understand, that to you. I understand where you're going. I try to explain the it to the you. dumpster. Huh? The dumpster. Did nobody see you put it there? I just chucked it in there. I lay, actually I laid it in there on top of a box. And I was gonna come back and get it in case he met me at Walmart. Okay. Did you have another one on you or just that one? You don't need a wood knife. Okay. That's that little thing station there, isn't it? Right before you get to Walmart by Payless? Okay. Let me get with John for a minute because I'm going to corroborate your story and make sure it matches everything we found. Okay? okay? I am just a... Um, okay. Okay, hold on just a second. something just a second. Um, okay. Because um, here, here's the deal. What, what we need to make sure is I certainly don't want you to be anybody to, to misconstrue what went on here tonight and try to blame you for something that else that, that happened that you might not have done. Okay? I understand. Huh? Okay. Um, is that why you needed a knife? Well, um, no. What but, happened at the house after I left? Because I killed her, okay? But Daniel is knows how to really fuck things up for people, okay? I don't know what he did after I left. Um... Well, I think, I don't know, the last time I heard from Daniel, he was in the back seat of our car, too. He, he may be, I don't know, he might possibly be in a little bit of trouble, too. Well, he should fucking be in trouble. Uh, I don't want him back over there in the house, but they, we've got so many animals in my sister. Did, did you see anybody hurt any of those animals while you was there? No. Not uh The only problem that we had with those animals, I mean, I saw a couple of neighbor kids, you know, their 4th of July walk by and throw firecrackers. No, I mean, to Matt, when you had your altercation with your sister, did, no. did you hurt one of them animals? No. Okay. Because one of them is hurt. Which one? I, I have no idea yet. I'm going to find out. But there is one that's hurt. So I was just wondering, curious maybe if I happened with that. Uh, no, I love the animals too. I just, I hate to well, see Well, I, I thought maybe that while you was fighting with your sister, maybe one accidentally got stabbed too while you, while you was fighting with your sister accidentally. Uh, she does not have the money to support all the animals, mm -hmm. and I worry about that because they go hungry sometimes. You know, and I bring salads back for birthing and you know when I went to birthing I, bring, I try to bring some food back I put it in the icebox and I tell Daniel I said Daniel 
It's for the dogs. Feed it to them in the morning. Some of them wore out by the time I get back from work. Next morning, they eat, took nothing out there to them. Oh, really? They go get them some dog food or something. Uh, Cat food. Yeah, that's sad, isn't it, isn't it Stephen? Well, Stephen, let me ask you something. What, what do you think should happen to you for all this? Do you think you need to go to jail? I'm going to jail. I mean, but what do you think? Do you I think? need to go to fucking San Salem after living in that house for the last two years. Yes. But I mean, do you, do you think that you need to go to prison? You'd be shot. You'd take me out of right No, right we're not going to do that. Shoot me in the head, please. Well, no, we can't do that. And you know what? Because I, I still say, and I'm not, and this has nothing to do with your case. This is the honest to God truth. God still loves you. I know he does. He does. Sure, sure, and, and, and what you did is forgivable. And God will forgive you. Now, now you know good and well as I do, you're going to have to go to jail because that's that's what your punishment's going to be. I already know that. Yeah, and you knew that. You knew that before you even got up here, didn't you? I've done over half of my life. Have you? What for? For a got 30 of it. I'm still on parole. You're on parole for that? We're out, we're out of it. Right here? Dallas. Oh, in Dallas. Would you just have parole up right here? 1990. They just lowered my supervision. And I heard from some people. <laughs> Pardon me. I've heard from certain people that uh, they don't lower people's supervision. <laughs> yeah, really? You talking about Dallas County or here? Here. I've been out here almost going on two years. And try to do good, try to get a job. Every, every time I get a paycheck. They're sucking it out of you. Fucking A. What the fuck am I working for? I mean, if it ain't that, it's eighty dollars worth of gas every two weeks. Hold on, sorry. Let me turn this on. Hold on a second. I'm sorry. Hold on a second. Hello. serious. It is serious. It's bad serious. And uh, you knew when you come in here that you was going to be going to jail, didn't you? I was going to. If they had to, if they had to caught me the way they were, I would have took all the pills I had that bottle. Were you going to kill yourself? Hell yeah! I'm through with this shit. Tired of it. Tired of it. Working for somebody else. Working to have nothing. And then when you come home and you ain't got nothing, guess who you get it from? Your family. It's sad. It's sad. I've done everything for them. Everything in my power to help them. But Daniel, every time he turns around and he gets some money, guess where he's at? He's out there fucking buying crack. And how's that helping the family? How the fuck is that helping our family? Giving your money to the fucking niggers. Excuse my language. 
six months to recover from that pneumonia. Every year I catch pneumonia and it destroys your lungs further. So I don't have very good lungs. Lungs are shot. I really ain't got no business being smoking. And I told Daniel on day, I said, look man, you keep messing with me and I'm going to go into some mental institution where I ain't got to smoke. He didn't want that. See, because I've, I've been putting 200 dollars worth of food stamps in that house every month. Okay? Mm-hmm. Plus whatever else income I get into the household. And uh, I turn around and all the food's fucking gone. Daniel don't want to fucking work. She's around eating food all day while I'm out working. So fucking mooch. He's Oh, I don't ever let it. Well, how long did you get Burger King? How long did you work at Burger King? I don't remember when I started, but I've had uh, about four paychecks. Oh, okay. So did you like it down there? I love it. I love it. Well, Billy Mays was good at work for you. <laughs> yeah, I like Billy. I like Darwin. And I, I like cleaning the store. I like I like having the place clean when customers come in. Right. You know, and making sure orders are right. And clean the place up in the evening. Hey, ain't nothing better than that. You don't have a clean store. Billy comes in in the morning, inspects, everything's right. They never had a problem with my job performance. You know, but it's, 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 wears me out. It's time I get home, I'm wore out. You know, that's what I keep that brandy upstairs for. I take a couple shots of brandy, you know. I get on my world of tags and play my tag game for a couple uh, hours and I go to sleep. Uh, but hell, these last couple of days, ever since I bought that fucking big old bottle of brandy, it's been, uh, Daniel, come up here, fill this up. Fill this up, fill this up. I'm like, well, all right, man, here. <laughs> you know, just nagging me. Go get your own. Get a job. Get your own shit. You know? Fuck that shit. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. Well, yeah, I appreciate you being honest, finally being honest, but it's about the knife. Because, uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's where we found it. It was right where you said it was. Um, I just thought, though, that. Somebody might have actually seen you, but apparently not. But anyway, because it's routine, because when you stopped at Walmart, they're going to have you on video there. I know. Yeah, and we've already been searching and looking, and we figured that you might have had to stop because of your car. And I so, stopped because the damn thing was overheating, so I pulled it at gas station before Walmart. Yeah. But yeah, I, you know, and, and, and so and it's not uncommon for people to hydronize in places like that. So that's one of the first places we look a lot of times. And so uh, uh, it's just it, it didn't it didn't surprise us that that's where, where it was at. But I just but but you're right. That's where it was. We appreciate you because you are being honest. It was right exactly where you said it was. So that that's what I was trying to get at the whole time. Um, I understand. So uh, but anyways. Uh, well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. You are the sheriff, right? I am the sheriff. 
Well, fuck it. If you ever get a chance to lock down your life, please. We will. Don't you worry about that. We will. But I tell you what, let's get I you some water. Away, I know. Let's let's get you some water here in just a minute, okay? Just keep you safe. We'll get you. We'll get you something to drink. Do you have any coffee? Let me go see. I wouldn't care if it's day old coffee. Okay. Let me go check and see. Okay. I'll be right back. Spoiler alert, Nugent won't be getting a hot cup of coffee. Instead, he'll be placed under arrest and subsequently sentenced to 50 years prison time for the murder of his sister. He will most likely die in prison, seeing as he is set to be released when he was 106 years old. Thank you for watching, and special thanks go out to my Patreon subscribers who keep me motivated to make this type of content as opposed to my usual stock market stuff. Patreon subscribers get early access to my videos, please consider joining at the link in the description. Thanks again.